Yeah, this seems like a great day for some camping. We got momentarily separated after doing some backing up and maneuvering to get past another vehicle coming down this narrow trail, but it's a dead end so I know I'll stumble upon Jason eventually. We met up a few days ago with the intention of continuing our annual tradition of scouting further extensions to the overland route we've been plotting through the Oregon backcountry. This year it has been persistently raining out in the normally arid desert, the extremely slick eastern Oregon mud creating conditions that are both treacherous and damaging to these dirt roads. After weighing our various options, we've decided the most prudent course of action is to scrap our plans and pick this back up next year in hopefully drier weather. We had planned to be out exploring for a few more days, so after several hours of highway driving towards home, we found a place to camp, and tomorrow we'll just kick back and enjoy this beautiful area. Maybe. The morning is looking promising, and the view from this spot is simply spectacular. I've only passed through these mountains without ever spending any real time here, so I'm going to hike around a bit and get a better feel for the area. Well, if you've been following my channel this year, you've seen a lot of my adventures go kind of sideways, things not going according to plan and having to adjust on the fly. Sometimes it would be nice if things actually just kind of went the way they were supposed to go. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm disappointed that we had to basically give up on the trip we had planned. It was looking really interesting. It was nice to be in a very dramatically different part of the state, someplace that I really enjoy being. But there's times where it just doesn't make sense to force things and you, you have to adapt. But even though we're not where we plan to be, where I hoped to be this week, today, this is glorious, this is spectacular. This is a, a area of Oregon I haven't really explored. I sort of passed through very, very briefly, but um, I've never really explored it. I've never been here at this time of year. 
I've never seen these unbelievable tamarack trees that I didn't even know were out here. I've driven through here when everything was green. What an interesting sort of angle to the fall color to see a conifer that changes color. <laughs> the tamarack tree, passing unnoticed in the summer months among the firs and pines, is truly a coniferous marvel, distinguishing itself from its evergreen neighbors by transforming its emerald coat into a brilliant golden spectacle every autumn, followed by losing its needles completely just like the elms and maples and other leafy friends in the forest. The tamarack's needles lack the protective waxy coating evergreens employ to withstand harsh winter conditions. Shedding its vulnerable foliage before the bitter cold sets in ensures its survival through the depths of winter, a pragmatic response to the seasonal rigors which nevertheless presents a stunning aesthetic gift to those of us lucky enough to witness this fleeting exhibition of nature's artistry. Well, we got a nice actually break from the wind and rain at some point in the middle of the night. It stopped. That was nice. It was a lovely morning, but here it has started to rain again. But uh, yeah, once again, just going to have to go with the flow. Uh, Jason is actually making breakfast for both of us this morning. And uh, so hopefully I've gotten back to, to camp in time. I love it, oh, this looks good. We are warmed by Jason's delicious grilled burritos of egg, sausage, and potato as the pervasive army of rain clouds launch yet another volley upon our mountain perch. Well, it wasn't supposed to rain until like three o'clock today, um, but uh, already at 10 o'clock in the morning, it has started raining on and off on us. So uh, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and get the awning set up. We're gonna just stay here for the day and enjoy this spot. So uh, why don't we come to play? precipitation provides the perfect opportunity to prepare for the evening's campfire. watching Jason cut all that wood. So as a new convoy of rain clouds commences unloading its cargo onto our camp, it's time to cook up a little lunch. What I've actually done here with the awning is I released some of the tension so that it was not pulled so tight. It actually allows the awning to sort of create some troughs naturally without even being, you know, staked down. So the water is now draining off without pooling up. So, yeah, I mean, camping in the rain is is not ideal. Everything gets wet, and in here, it's just damp. Now, the camper is keeping the rain out, 
but we've been out in cold, wet weather for days now. And I've been running the Mr. Heater Buddy, which puts moisture into the air. I've been in here breathing all night, every night, more moisture in the air. And I've been coming into the camper with my wet clothes, my wet coat, my wet shoes. I've just been bringing water in. So it's just damp in here. And with the cold, of course, I'm getting some condensation on especially the uninsulated surfaces. So it's just, it's just damp. But I'm sitting here and thinking, this is a lot nicer than sitting in a tent. Feels very solid and cozy. And I know from experience, the wind can blow, the rain can come down and I'm fine in here. Just enjoying that view out there. Just unwinding a bit from everything that we were dealing with in Eastern Oregon. This is okay. While we've been getting regularly hammered with downpours, intermittent breaks in the weather allow us to occasionally exit our shelters and contemplate the dramatic vista unfurled below us, where restless clouds weave an intricate tapestry binding the mountains to the sky. As Jason served breakfast this morning, I'm going to scrounge through my fridge and try and come up with some kind of dinner for us. I didn't expect to cook for anyone on this trip, and I didn't even plan out specific meals for myself. I just threw some random groceries in the truck and figured on improvising as I went. I'm going to see what I can pull together here. So you've seen me using this gas bottle for years and it's worked out great. The only thing with these little gas bottles, they have no sort of like gauge on them to show you how much uh, propane is left in them. And I'm always worried that I'm gonna run out. So I go to the propane shop and I have them fill it and they're always like, oh, it hardly needed anything. It hardly needed anything. So uh, before this trip, I did not go and have it refilled because I'm embarrassed each time I go and ask them to fill it and it takes like nothing at all and it's like one dollar worth of propane and I'm just like embarrassed to have even taken their time. So I didn't refill it before this trip and of course what happens is I ran out when I was cooking dinner for Jason of Primal Outdoors. Fortunately, I do still carry this little backpacking stove. I just keep it inside the camper in case I need to cook something or make coffee uh, inside when it's uh, inclement weather. And I've actually already done that on this trip. It's a little awkward with these big pans because it's sort of precarious, but uh, we're gonna make it work because we can't leave Jason hungry.
another tumultuous night of wind and rain has given way to a pastel morning unfolding with serene grace. The stillness wrapping us in a gentle embrace, and the forest seems to exhale with relief as glimpses of blue promise a day of peace. While this year's saga has been prematurely halted by a capricious antagonist we could not conquer, the few chapters we did manage to compose were nonetheless enjoyable to experience. We'll pick it back up next year, but for now, it is time to air up and head home.